Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. Well, this is going to be the second episode in this new series I just started where I'm building uh, my version of the uh, Fender Meteora. And I'm going to call it the E-War Stingray because once I got this thing all drawn up on paper, I looked at it and I thought, that looks just like a Stingray. So I don't know if it does or not, but to me it does. So that's what I'm going to call it, the E-War Stingray. Anyway, in the last episode, I went over the design and I went over the woods we're going to use and I just kind of kicked off the little series. And in this video, we're going to take all of the lumber, which when I got it was all rough sawn lumber, and we're going to cut it down, we're going to size it to the proper size that we need for our blanks, and we're going to mill it up to get it nice and flat and straight and everything ready to go so we can begin gluing everything up. So I've already done a little pre-prep work on this wood before I started videoing this. So basically all I've done so far is I took these boards I had that were a bit too wide, I went ahead and joined up one edge, got rid of the rough sawn edge, and uh, ripped it down on my table saw to get it to roughly the right width. I'm still a little bit wider. And I just basically got these guys set up, you know. So they're, uh, these body blank pieces are ready to go. Now the next thing we need to do is we've got to make sure that uh, these pieces are all perfectly flat and without any uh, warp or twist in it or anything. So you see, if I put it down on my bench top here, this bench is pretty flat. See, those things rock back and forth pretty good. So, and we've got to get rid of that because we're not going to be able to glue up the joint and get it really nice unless these guys are, will lay perfectly flat together and also want everything to be at the perfect thickness. So some of the parts we've got uh, that we've got to work on right now are narrow enough that they can fit on my joiner. I have a six inch joiner over there and that works great between the joiner and the planer. I could uh, lay this down in my joiner. I could run it through a couple times to flatten off one side and then I could flip it over and run it through my planer and uh, uh, plane the other side, which when it's all said and done, the two sides will be perfectly flat and parallel to each other, which is exactly what we want. And then I could join up the, um, the narrow edge on one edge and then I'll have a perfectly uh, flat and parallel two surfaces and I'll have a square edge, which then I could begin ripping it down to the right width I need. But <clears throat> what I've got on my body blank parts is these guys right now, they're about seven and a half inches wide and they simply do not fit on my joiner. So the joiner's out of the question for these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay, set these up on my CNC machine and I have a one inch, uh, uh, one inch diameter surfacing bit and I'm gonna set these up on my CNC machine and I'm gonna run a surface path on one side and then I could flip it over and run it through my planer on the other side and I'll get my two flat and parallel surfaces that way. So uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do it or not, but I'm gonna set up a little camera in front of my computer screen over here, and I'm gonna show you quickly how I uh, drew the tool path to do the surfacing operation. And then we're gonna set up on the CNC machine and go ahead and run it and see how it goes. Okay, so this is Vectric V-Carve right here. Uh, I'm opening up to, I opened up a new, uh, a new job, new project. And so the first thing you have to do when you do this is you come over here and you want to set up your material. So this is a single sided job. Uh, if you look over here on the left hand side, I'm going to tell it the width of my boards are about seven and a quarter. So I'm going to tell it 7.25 and the length is around 20.5. They they're vary a little bit uh, and the thickness is one inch. That really doesn't matter for what we're doing. And I'm going to tell it here, I want my uh, my uh, machine to recognize the surface, the top surface of the material as being the zero position. And I'm gonna set my XY datum position to the center, which is that red dot right here in the middle, which is telling the machine all tool paths will originate from the center of this board. So anyway, so I set that up. And now what I wanna do is I wanna draw, I, I, now that's my material setup, but I wanna draw my outline of the tool path I wanna create. So. I'm going to create a square, and rather than 7 by uh, 20 and a half, I'm going to go 8 inches wide by 21 and a half inches. Um, and the reason I do that is, is because my bit, the center of my bit is going to cut on this tool path that I've created, this outline of the tool path, and I want to make sure that the bit entirely covers the board so I don't have any little, uh, little areas missed. So anyway, uh, that being said, you'll probably understand it when I get going on it. So now I have my tool path drawn, this simple rectangle outside of my material line. So I want to open up this side on the right-hand side, and I want to create a tool path. And to do a surfacing, 
I'm going to do a pocketing toolpath. Okay, now I've already got some things already set up in here because the previously uh, I previously done this same toolpath on a different size piece of material. But over here on the top, you want to tell it how deep do you want to cut the pocket. And so we're going to go 30 thousandths of an inch, which I think is going to be plenty for these. And if I have to run it twice, I'll run it twice. You then select the bit you're going to use. And I'm using a one inch spoil board bit. And this bit is intended to flatten surfaces. So it's a perfect bit for this. Tell it how many passes you're going to do. In this case, we're only going 30 thousandths. So one pass will do it. I got to ramp my plunge move. And now we want to come down here and name it. So we're going to name this um, 8 by 21 surface. And we're going to say 0 0.03, which when this is in the list uh, somewhere down the road, I'll be able to look at this, the name of this toolpath, and I'll know exactly what it's going to do. So that's why I name it that. So now we're going to say calculate. And what it's going to do, it's going to pull up a mock-up or a simulated piece of wood, and this is basically a 3D view. You could rotate this around and look at it, but you can see the blue lines on there are basically representing the path that the bit is going to take. And then I come over here and I can click on Preview Visible Toolpath, and it's going to run it for us. So you can see right here the bit is actually uh, cutting. It's showing a one-inch uh, round bit, and it's cutting the toolpath in exactly the way we just designed it. You want to do this just to kind of take a look and make sure uh, everything's going to happen the way you want it. Okay, so that's it. So you can see it came out, uh, it came out even. I caught all the corners on the thing. So I think that's going to look pretty good. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and save this toolpath. So we're going to close out of that and click on this little guy right here and we're going to save the toolpath. Uh, click that. And we are going to go to, I've got uh, vCarve toolpath files. And I'm going to go into my surfacing toolpath. And I'm going to save it right here. You can see I've already got some 9 by 22 surface toolpaths that are already created for the piece of zero coat we're going to do. So now I'm going to save this one for my body blanks. And that's it. And we are ready to send this to the CNC machine and get cutting away. Okay, so here's the first uh, piece of the body blanks we're going to surface off. And you can see I've got my uh, crosshairs drawn in the middle here, which is the exact center of this piece of wood. And I'm kind of going to line that up basically in the uh, centered on this machine here. Okay, and I've got it up against my fence here, which I'll push it up against that with this, and that's how I'm going to lock it down. But if you can see here, that thing is rocking quite a bit. And what I've got to do, let me see. Now those two sides, those two corners are pretty stable. These two are the rockers. So what I've got, I've got these two little pieces of tapered wood. These are a couple of pieces of maple I have. And they taper down to very, very little, probably a 32nd of an inch or less. And I've got graduation marks marked on here. I've got one inch increments all the way up the boards. And what I like to do is I want to put one in each corner so I'm going to slip this guy in here, right? And I'm going to put this one in this corner up here. And I want to slide them in equal amounts because I want to try to find the, the happy medium of this board laying on top of the machine. So I'm going to put them in there until it no longer rocks. Okay, so it's not rocking that way. And it's not rocking that way. So I've just got barely the tip of these guys under there. It didn't take very much at all, but I think that's going to be good. Now I've got to push my lock-in piece right up against the side here. Okay, I'm going to push it up tight. I'm up against my fence, which is locked down. My board is sitting nice and firm. And I'm going to lock down my two clamps here, and that should hold this thing nice in place. Okay, now I'm going to have to jog my machine over and get the bit lined up over that center point which I'm going to do right here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to set that as my, I'm going to zero the X out on the machine, zero the Y out on the machine, and we're, we're going to call that good. Now I still need to set the, the Z, which is the height, so I'm going to raise that a little bit. For that we use this little guy right here which is my touch plate.
Okay, so now that we're set up on the CNC machine, we've got our, our machine zeroed out, we've got the piece of wood uh, installed in there, ready to go. Now I've got to uh, run the tool path. So this right here, this is a program that came with the CNC machine that is called Ready to Control. And this is how you control the CNC machine. So first you have to load your file. So I open up where I saved it and I select on the 8x21 surface and I click on open. And then you can see it here now, it lays down. It's showing me exactly where the uh, tool path is going to go, just like in Vetric V-Carve. Now I simply hit this arrow right here and it starts going. Okay, so I could see because of the tool marks on here that that bit hit every last little piece of this board. So I believe we're going to be really good with that. So let me unlock it here. I always like to check it with my straight edge to make sure we got a good job. Let me see here. That is beautifully flat. Everywhere. Looks great this way too. Okay, so that's great. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do that same operation on the remaining pieces and then we'll take them over to the planer. We'll flip them up, put the flat side down on the bed of the planer and we'll surface this side to uh, make it perfectly parallel and flat with this side. Okay, so one thing I came across as I started doing these other pieces, some of these have just very little rock to it to where that's rocking like so. I really don't have enough room to get the thinnest part of my little wedges in here. So the other way you could do this is I'm going to mark these two corners I'm going to do here. And I'm going to layer up layers of tape. I'll probably start with two layers under each corner and go three, four, and so on until I have the right thickness to where this, isn't, uh, this doesn't rock anymore. So tape is a really good option when your wedges aren't going to fit. Okay, so all these guys came out really nice. I went ahead and labeled two of them body and two of them uh, tops. So we're going to use the ones that got a little more of the sap line in it. We're going to use those for the body since we could hide that. And the top and the back, I picked the two better pieces, which we'll, uh, we'll uh, resaw them down to the right thickness. Anyway, but for now, we're going to take these. We're going to take the surface side and we're going to put it down on the bed of the planer and run these through. And that'll make the back sides of these things match up with the front. So that's what we're going to do, get going with right now. Comparison, breathing deeply, selling this dim, sleeping at last, peaceful living. Kings and kingdoms follow as he stands from his throne. Okay, so all four came out really nice. They're now down to, they're just over one inch thick, 1.038 inches thick, and they're all, uh, they're all really, really close to being the same. So they're in good shape now. So what I wanna do before I move on to anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and run them through my surface sander just to knock off those uh, tooling marks from the CNC machine and the marks from the uh, planer too. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, so all my body pieces came out really nice. I'm just a tad over one inch thick. I've got them all sanded, surface sanded on both sides. They're all super flat and they're ready to go. And even that, I did the zero coat top too. And boy, that's, that is just a phenomenal piece of wood. I, I can't even imagine how that grew like that. But uh, anyway, beautiful stuff. So it's all set to go. Um, what I think I'm gonna do on my top parts before I go any further with them 
is if you remember, I told you in the first video, we are going to do a veneer. We're going to sandwich a veneer in between the top and the back and the, uh, or sorry, in between the top and the core and the bottom and the core. So I'm going to go ahead and sandwich some of uh, this uh, fumed oak veneer on both sides of the core pieces first before we, uh, before we go any further. That way when I fit that joint, when I fit the two pieces of body parts together, that uh, when I plane them fit, it'll have the veneer on it, so I'll get a really good joint with the veneer too. Not that you're gonna see it, it's gonna be covered, but it's just in good practice to get a good fit. So uh, that's what we're doing. I'm gonna cut up this veneer, and we're gonna get them glued on. Okay, so I'm all set up to glue on these veneers. And uh, if you've all watched me before, you know I like using this UltraCat. It's a pre-catalyzed, uh, what do they call it? Pre-catalyzed powdered resin glue. And it's really, really good stuff. It's specially designed for uh, veneers, but it is super hard. It's, I believe it gets harder than even tight bond. So it's great for just general uh, woodworking too. So I've got my stuff out here. I'm gonna turn down the camera. I'm gonna mix up about a cup of this glue it's a powder, you mix it with warm water, and uh, you mix it up and then it spreads just like glue and it's, and it's sort of a brown color. It gets sort of a chocolatey brown color, which is perfect for the woods we're using here too. So anyway, I'm gonna turn down the camera and get rolling with that right now. Just even maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, so that looks good. I mixed it twice over probably a five minute period of time and that, uh, that came out looking really good. So, uh, what, I've, what I'm gonna do here is I've got a piece of MDF with a uh, piece of wax paper on top of it. I'm gonna lay down one of the pieces of veneer, okay, right on top, and I'm gonna glue the board itself rather than rather than gluing the veneer, because that veneer will start to curl up on you immediately. So I'm gonna, let's see if I can dip my thing in here. Yeah, I can. Okay, so I got this roller. This is kind of like a rubber roller. That's their uh, veneersupplies.com. They recommend you use these rollers. They're the best way to apply the glue evenly. And they're right, it does a good job. And they say you want to be able to see through the glue, which you obviously can. In other words, they say if you had pencil writing on there, if you wrote a word on there in pencil, you want to be able to see it through the glue and you know you got a decent coverage. And I think I do right there. And I'm going to also throw on just a little sprinkle of uh, salt. A couple there, a couple down there. That's just going to keep it from sliding around on top of the veneers while I get my other pieces glued up. And if rain goes on and on Oh, is rain goes on and on Creation made of Brighter crude by her groom Earth restored as kingdom come Kingdom come Okay, I think that looks good. We'll let that dry up now. Okay, so these guys came out really nice. Uh, I pulled them out of the clamps this morning. I've still got to take my knife and trim off these edges and then rejoin the two uh, mating surfaces for these uh, body blanks. But, but that's it. That is going to be the core of our body. 
And I think it's going to look really awesome with that little tiny skinny veneer running all the way around, two lines running all the way around the body. I think that's going to look really cool. So anyway, uh, I'm glad you all checked it out. I hope you liked it. I hope somebody got a little something out of this thing. And if you all come back next week, we're going to get into those tops. We're going to resaw down these tops, and we're going to get them to the proper thickness. We're going to get them down the top and the back to about 3 eighths of an inch thick. And I'm going to take this piece of zero coat, and we're going to go ahead and cut this on the CNC machine and cut a pocket in the top on the CNC machine for our pick guard looking thing. And I think that's going to be really awesome. I can't wait to do it. Anyway, uh, hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless you, and we'll see you all in the next one.